All right, everybody, welcome to module four. In module one and two, we basically introduced a bunch of concepts to you that I'm going to need for this very module. Well, starting with this very module. And actually, in module three, what we did is we look at the pure substances. Now I will be able to kind of combine module two, module three, module one to get something that is useful to me. Okay? And the first thing is we talked about energy, well, which is thermodynamics, right? Energy analysis of closed systems okay so the, let's start with the first two words of this uh, title energy analysis do you remember we talked about this first law of thermal is equal to the conservation of energy right that is the energy conservation principle to begin with so in, in other words this whole module is about applying the first law to a closed system Okay, then the next thing that we need to talk about what a closed system is, right? That's the last two words of this uh, module. So as we discussed before, the closed system, or also it's called control mass, is it is a system that we pick and the mass is not leaving or entering the system, okay? A typical example that we will use in thermodynamics, and there's a lot of application space for this is, let's say I have a piston cylinder device and this is completely sealed. So for instance, if I want to move it up, or down, right? Uh, the mass over here, if the system is the, let's say, whatever the flow it is inside of it is, is my system, that's not gonna like leak, okay? I'm saying that this is completely sealed, so then it's gonna stay the same, right? The mass over here is not gonna change. So this is an example of a closed system. So as you can see, the closed system has a lot of applications in thermodynamics, okay? Don't worry if you wanna know more about open systems, this is much more general. That is module five, it is coming. And trust me, it is harder. Okay, um, I want to remind you a couple uh, basic formulas that we established. I don't want to reteach the module two once again, but I want to just look at a couple um, equations that we derived. Okay, and as you remember, this E has three modes. The first uh, energy transfer mode was the heat transfer, right? The second one was the basically the work, right? And also, we had the mass that can transfer the energy. Think about the hot water um, coming into your from coming from your faucet into the sink. It is going to increase the energy of the system. Okay, E mass out will be equal to delta E of the system. Okay, I don't know why why I'm writing in red. I think red is hard to see, but I'll change it now. Okay. But one thing is we said that if this is a closed system, this term will go out because the mass is, there's no mass coming to, to increase my energy or leaving. So it reduces my energy, right? So that's that. Okay. So I only have these terms. Okay. And let's talk about the Q for a second over here. Um, well, we, we said that there is a heat transfer, right? Basically energy transfer across a boundary. This, if this is due to the temperature first. There needs to be some kind of a delta T between the surrounding and the system. So if the system, for instance, has a particular temperature, the surrounding is a higher or lower temperature, so there'll be heat transfer between those two system and the surrounding, okay? And work is actually much better. We say energy tran transfer across a boundary, not due to temperature difference. So basically everything else, okay? Delta T, so system, I have my system over here, I have the surrounding in here, I can have a basically Q coming in, Q coming out, right? I have can have work in, work out. As long as this is related to the temperature difference, I call this uh, Q, right? So that is giving me Q. If the energy transfer across a boundary is not due to the temperature difference, then I call, go ahead and I call it a work, okay? This can change the direction, so obviously I'm just looking at the in component this time, okay? Okay, um, the other side that I already discussed, you may want to watch some of the videos as well, is the energy of the system. And we said that it's going to be delta kinetic energy, delta potential energy, and we said this is going to be delta internal energy. And we said that this is 1 over 2 mv squared plus mgz plus mu, right? U is the specific internal energy that we were able to cover in much more depth in module 3, right? So obviously there's a delta in front of all of them, right? So I'm talking about the delta, the change, okay? But we also talked about something else. We said that if the system is stationary, it's not going anywhere, 
right? The velocity will be zero. The potential energy change will be zero, right? So then I'm only going to left with the micro microscopic version of the uh, energy, which is the internal energy. The microscopic ones, which are these two, will vanish. Again, you can visit my previous uh, segments to, 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 to for a more in-depth conversation on this one, okay? The new concept that we have is, we did not discuss this, I will actually look at the work and I will kind of like uh, deal with it a little bit in depth, okay? And a form of work that I did not have a chance to talk, study so far is the boundary work, okay? Boundary work. And this is uh, associated with uh, something kind of like a mis misunderstanding sometimes is this. So the question is this. If the system is closed, not open, can the system move? Okay, can the boundary move? The answer is yes. Actually, I gave a, a quite relevant example over here, right? Let's say that I have, you know, some kind of fluid over here. Let's say it's a gas, and I double the pressure. What will happen in here? Well, it's going to push because we, we talked about this in module one. There will be a balance of pressure here with respect to the weight of the piston, etc. But this will go up. Right? So if I have a boundary over here like this, right? Next time around, in, you know, when I double it, for instance, it may go like this to the next uh, stop, and then this may be the piston. Again, assume that this is an infinite, uh, you know, so it's still going up, right? So the point is, yes, I can move my closed system from a position to position. And as I highlighted, the boundary work is important for compression or expansion process, right? And the piston cylinder is a good example for it. Internal combustion engine is another example that we uh, study, um, like compressors, etc. So you know, like those kind of environments, we will be moving our boundary. Okay. And now I'm interested in well, the, the boundary work because it's going to create some work. Okay. If the boundary doesn't change, right? It is stationary. Boundary is not moving anywhere. Then what I'm talking about here is zero. Okay. But I'm talking about those case, that case where it is moving, okay? So like this and like that, right? Um, let's say it goes up, right? That's an assumption. The answer doesn't change. The, the number, you know, minus versus positive, that's not change, okay? And you can see the, the, the boundary that I have over here is moving, taking the fluid within the piston cylinder device as my system, okay? And I use this S, the reason is I want to be consistent with what I talked about, okay? Do you remember we said that the work is equal to force times the distance, right? You know this from maybe uh, physics, right? Easily, nothing to do with thermodynamics, it's the fundamental formula, right? So uh, if I go, but obviously you should ask me what is one and S2, let's say that I go, you know, like let's say this is position one, this is position two, so I call this I don't know where S starts, but I'm going to say that this is S1 and S2. Sometimes this S1 will be zero. That's okay. But I, I just don't know. I want to leave it generic like this. Okay? Okay. So, right. So, the force. What is the force when there's a, you know, they are at a, a equilibrium due to the pressure? Well, that force, do you remember that? P is equal to F divided by A. So, I'm going to go back now. Okay? So, S1 to S2, F, A, D. S, okay? And I will ask you a question, maybe you will not be able to immediately see it, but if you think about it for a while, you will be able to see what is A times dS, okay? So this, this thing about it, the A is the area, area times, so let's have a cube over here as an example, right? The area of a cube, okay, that's a very bad drawing, but it's gonna do just fine for these purposes. Um, so if I have like, let's say the area here, times the height, what is it? Area times height. That is going to be the volume, right? Same thing over here. So now I have the cross-sectional area of the cylinder piston device and the S1 that I will move, that will give me, or rather the S that I move, will give me some kind of a volume term. And I'll write it this way. Now I'm going to worry about the integral elements in a minute because I'm changing the variable over here. You can see I changed this to the volume. Now now, now the, my variable, you can see in here, I'm writing with S, right? Now it's a volume, so I will have to write here volume 1 to volume 2, right? And I gave that example previously. So let's say that this, this is volume 1. The next one, it moves up, it goes to here, then it goes only volume 2, right? You can imagine over here, if I'm expanding, right? 
So I'm increasing the, my volume 2 will be more than volume 1. So I'll get a positive sign, mathematically speaking. So I'll get a positive sign if I have an expansion. Okay. Um, so that is going to be verb done by the system. I'm being consistent with more terminology that I used. Okay. Work done by the system. Right. And this is going to be, if this is my system, it's leaving the system, W out. Okay. So the work, I will get a negative value. As you can imagine, if I'm compressing it, my V2 will be lower than V1. So then I'll get a mathematical speaking negative term. Okay. And this will be work done on the system. I don't want to confuse you, but it is also called work done by the surroundings. So because the surrounding is pushing it in, right? The pressure is high in the surrounding, so it's pushing it in. The surrounding is doing the work, but the work is done on the system. And the system is, I'm talking about this, okay? That's all I have for this particular segment. So now the question, the name of the game will be, how is the speed related to volume? So I can kind of like investigate this. Maybe I will be able to get some type of uh, formulas for us, for me, expansion and compression processes, okay? I'll be right back. Thank you for watching this segment.